AEC 36 News at midday starts now. We're just lucky to get out of there. I didn't think I didn't think we was gonna make it out. I thought we was gonna die. You just heard from an evacuee, one of dozens of people forced to flee their homes following a massive explosion in Lincoln County this morning. Good afternoon, I'm Erica Bivens. We've been following this developing story for you all morning. We are now getting word of a live news conference about to get underway right now in Lincoln County. It looks like emergency officials are, be, are giving an update right now on that explosion. We'll let you listen in live. Scene. Uh, she has been taken to Frankfurt to the state medical examiner's office. Uh, for an autopsy uh, that should be going on uh, today and we'll have some more information about her exact cause of death whenever that is completed. Uh, we have multiple agencies, local, state and federal, uh, who have offered assistance that are at the scene uh, trying to go through to figure out exactly what may have happened. As you can imagine, this is going to be a long investigation. Uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, agencies that are going to conduct their own investigation uh, and put those together at the end so that we can determine what happened. We do know that uh, residents from at least five homes, uh, five homes have been completely destroyed. The number may be a little bit higher than that, but from being at the scene, uh, the, the fire was so hot that even the gravel road, or the, the, the asphalt road that circles the area uh, looks more like a gravel driveway. Uh, heat from it has melted uh, several parts on multiple cars. Uh, it's void of vegetation and grass. Some pictures have been taken and sent out earlier today. Uh, one of the stories that, that we have learned about was a Lincoln County deputy uh, who was one of the first people, if not the first uh, law enforcement officer on scene. Uh, the descri described pulling in toward the fire, feeling the heat from the fire come through his windshield. And he was uh, fortunately was able to locate and see an elderly gentleman walking with a cane and a flashlight uh, there near the fire. Uh, he got out of his vehicle, uh, loaded that individual up, and he said, we need to find my wife. And the deputy then took some additional time, located an elderly female, and took them from the scene. Uh, those two have been taken to the hospital with, life, with non-life-threatening injuries, uh, and also the deputy has been transported to the hospital uh, with non-life-threatening injuries. Uh, without him being there at the right time, uh, you know, we could have had more fatalities and casualties than what we had. A meeting is going to be taking place at 5 p.m. today at New Hope Baptist Church, uh, just south of the scene for people that live in the immediate area and that were directly impacted by this morning's fire and explosion. With that, I'd be happy to take a few questions um, and try to get you some more information. At this point, we believe that we have made contact with all of the families that live in the area. We don't believe that we have anybody else that is unaccounted for at this time. Um, after being at the scene, walking through, um, frankly, that is, that is surprising. Um, the, the houses that, that are there uh, are completely destroyed. And as you can imagine, at, at 1 o'clock in the morning, most people uh, are inside asleep. Uh, and so this could have been much, much worse. Uh, we believe that the female uh, that died as a result uh, of the incident that occurred today uh, may have seen or heard the fire or the explosion occur, uh, left her residence, at which time uh, we believe that the heat may have overtaken her and led to her death. But we still have a lot of things that we're trying to figure out uh, as we move forward. Would the fact that you've accounted for everybody at this point indicate that you don't believe there's going to be any more fatalities? We do not believe at this point that, that there are going to be any other fatalities. We believe that we have everybody accounted for. Obviously, we're going to continue to investigate and make sure that that is the case. Uh, but we spoke with detectives. Uh, many of our detectives have spoke with all of the families that live there. It wasn't just a, hey, I think I talked to somebody today. Uh, or, or one of our detectives has actually been on the phone making calls, tracking down people to make sure that we believe that everybody has been accounted for. Can you describe this scene over here? I mean, kind of tell us what it looks like uh, and what caused that. Was it the blast? Was it the fire? Can you right you know the the scene the scene is is, is rather large I, I there's a, a house or a residence that's probably four or five hundred yards away uh from where the initial explosion took place the siding is is literally melted off of the the the, the residence um the, the the area is void of trees uh grass uh one of the the people that were there in the scene earlier uh described it as looking more like mars 
uh, than anything. It's just the red dirt is all that you can see in, in gravel, rocks. That's, that's all that's left in several areas. Uh, the very center uh, where the explosion occurred actually occurred uh, near a railroad track. Uh, which is why the railroad was shut down. I believe that it, it may have even melted part of the track. Uh, so that just goes into talking about how hot it really was. You're saying it melted the track, it melted the asphalt in that area? Yes, it, it was a, a, a large pipeline uh, that runs through the area that exploded, uh, caught fire. And we believe that uh, we've, we've heard reports that people could see um, the, the burn or the fire from as far as ways from Lexington. Uh, so it was something that, that caused, you know, uh, quite a quite, quite a, a visual um, thing going on this so morning. The explosion or the fire that causes damage or both? You know, I, I believe that the fire continued for quite a while. Uh, we had a video, I've seen video from the scene uh, that it, it sounded like a jet engine that was taking off uh, as a result of the of the fire. Uh, the gas, as you can imagine, was continuing to flow, uh, flow upward, um, and that's what, what sent that, that fire uh, so high into the, into the sky. Uh, trains, uh, last I heard, they, they thought that they're going to have the railroad tracks open very soon if they haven't already. I believe the last number that I heard whenever we spoke to the railroad was 17 trains uh, that were backed up at this point. So as you can imagine, that's probably going to take a little while uh, to get back to normal. Uh, traffic, uh, traffic they've, they set up a detour, a uh, north and south detour, which has helped uh, tremendously. Uh, it, it hasn't had a large impact. Um, I believe that one of the few vehicles that hasn't been able to, to make that trip uh, was a wide load uh, semi truck. But all of the local residents uh, have continued to, to utilize that detour uh, to, to reduce any kind of impact from that. Yeah, you know, the, the, the area of the explosion is a, is a, a little ways off of 127. Um, you know, our, our main thing whenever we got here today was to ensure other people's safety, everyone's safety in the area. Uh, since then, you know, obviously the, the gas has been shut off uh, to, that, to that gas pipeline. Uh, we, have, we do have a lot of people in the area. Uh, and as, as always, the 127 yard sale, it causes us some traffic issues as well. Uh, but first responders did a great job of setting up a, a very good detour and route to alleviate uh, any potential traffic congestion. When what? Will residents be able to go back to their homes? Residents will uh, be able to uh, as we continue our investigation. Uh, right now we have it shut down. Uh, we're, gonna, we're in the works of hopefully opening 127 uh, soon. Uh, as soon as we can get all the first responder vehicles away from the scene, make sure that they're going to be safe, we'll open 127, which is going to allow some people to, to get back closer to home. Uh, as far as that neighborhood that was affected, uh, it may be some time before people are able to make it back into, into their residence. So you uh, mentioned five homes destroyed. Were there others damaged? Uh, there, there were several homes that were damaged. Uh, most of them, though, are, are within a fairly close proximity to where this fire took place. Uh, we're not talking about something. We're talking about something that took up, uh, you know, 10, 15, 20 acres. You know, if, if it was within about four or 500 yards from where this initial fire took place, uh, you know, some of those homes have been impacted. Uh, I know one of the homes that I was I was there was kind of remarkable at a, a trailer or a, a residence that was completely destroyed. Uh, it was actually the, the residence where the two people uh, that were taken to the hospital with injuries and they had a flagpole out in front and an American flag flying. And, uh, and many of us just made the comment, you know, how symbolic was that and just absolutely incredible. There were, um, you know, uh, mailboxes and trash cans that were melted uh, really close to there, uh, but, the, but the flag, it was, it was still flying. Uh, head on, two questions for you, if you don't mind. Um, you, got, you had said earlier that there were two area pipelines that have been affected or should not have been affected. Has anyone been out there since then to check um, and ensure that those are absolutely not affected? Uh, Enbridge has been on scene since this occurred. This is Jim McGuffey. He's with Enbridge. He may be able to address that better than I. Do you mind? Do you mind? Sorry, Sorry. Sorry. After we got there this morning, we seen that the two pipelines had a sufficient amount of cover, and that protects the heat. But also, we, we, we have already reduced pressure on those two lines, and they're shut in. So yes, we think they are good, but we will inspect them. See. Are there just two lines there, sir, or three? There's there? three lines there. Okay. You know, a 30 and a 250? Uh, 230. 330s. 330s. Yes, sir. Do you know how many miles of pipeline? Uh, we run from the East Coast to the Gulf Coast. 
How, how close are you guys to figuring out exactly what happened? Well, we hadn't even got started for any investigation yet. We're how waiting. No the NTSB is coming outside. in. Huh? I'm sorry, no indications from outside what no. may have set this off. No, sir. How long do uh, these sorts of evaluations of the pipeline take? You never know. Uh, each situation is different. I mean, it could take a week. It could take three days. We don't know for sure. Uh, we have the NTSB coming in, okay. fences coming in, and then our engineers will be here looking. So that's what we'll be doing at NTSB and then... That should be starting this afternoon or in the morning. Do you know anything, sir, about when the last end pipeline uh, inspection would have been? Y'all run pigs through there? Yeah, we run control. pigs through there. I don't know. If, I hadn't looked this line up yet, but it's probably been about probably four years. Been four years since yeah. you ran a pig through there? Yes, sir. Maybe. It might be sooner than that. I'm just guessing. How deep is the pipeline? Uh, most of our pipelines are five foot deep. Sometimes deeper, sometimes shallow. Any livestock pet flops? Any livestock or pet flops? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I believe there were some pets uh, that there were there were lost as a result of the fire. Um, as you can imagine, right now, you know, our main concern was to make sure that uh, most of the people got out. Uh, however, we believe that uh, some some animals were outside. Maybe there, some that were inside the house. Uh, so yeah, we believe that uh, some some family pets uh, may have been lost as a result Folks as well. Folks down there, they, they they family or they neighbors, friends. How would you describe the, the neighborhood down there? Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a it's a, a residential area. The homes aren't necessarily right next to each other. Um, you know, they're, they're they're set apart quite a ways. Uh, I mean, had had the homes been much closer together, uh, this could have been potentially much much worse. Um, and so we're, we're, we're thankful that, that not that many people, uh, you know, were necessarily there. Uh, and it, that at this point, you know, obviously the, the one uh, fatality uh, is absolutely heartbreaking. Um, but but it, it, we, we're thankful that, that, you know, we were able to contact the other families and make sure that, that other people were able to get outside. Can you tell us, sir, the, the lady that died, how far she was from this point where the I, I don't. I don't have her her exact uh, no, location. Uh, I mean, she was she was one of the closer residences. Uh, you know, the the, the investigation kind of looks like she may have seen it, uh, heard what was going on, tried to leave. Uh, but as you can imagine, just based upon the deputy's statement about how hot it was, um, the, the heat could very easily uh, overtake somebody. Was she found outside the home or inside one of the homes? I, 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 I'm still trying to figure out exactly where she was located. I, I believe that she was outside of one of the homes. Uh, she may have been trying to trying to get to a neighbor's house. Um, you know, there, there's going to be a lot of things that we're going to be looking at. You know, the Kentucky State Police, we're, we're continuing our death investigation uh, into the cause of death and what may have happened uh, involving and surrounding her death. Trooper Birdie, you know, there by herself. Or that 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 I, I don't know who else may have been there. Trooper Birdie, you said that there were a number of homes destroyed. So were there people inside those homes when this happened, and they survived? I believe that uh, people were inside uh, and able to leave. Um, you know, multiple. As you can imagine, there was there was the initial explosion, the heat, uh, but as a result, the fire continued to spread. Uh, close to the scene, uh, there's there's basically no grass, no trees, uh, dirt and rocks is about it. Uh, as you start moving out, you can see where the grass was burning. So the fire departments this morning uh, did a great job of getting here, arriving at the scene, um, trying to minimize and mitigate any kind of damage that, that was going to occur. Um, and it's kind of things that unfortunately, you know, we hope never happens. Uh, but we know that the people are training for on a, on a weekly and daily basis. But again, even though those homes were destroyed, they survived. <laughs> yes. They were inside. We believe that they were inside. Uh, they left um, probably when they saw the fire uh, and people started evacuating the area. Um, another question for Edward. Do we know the, the date of that last inspection? Did you say? <laughs> no, I don't know. Right off tan. I'll okay, okay. But I'll try to get it for you. Okay, yeah. If we could get the details. Yeah, that this last afternoon at 5 or whenever our next. We'll get those details at last inspection. Yes. Okay. Um, and then another numbers question for you if you do or don't know. Do you know the exact number of structures um, impacted, I guess, lack of a better word, melted, burned? You know, I don't have an exact number. Um, best count, you know, we're probably looking at five or six that are completely gone. And that's just homes? Just Any homes. They, there, are, there are outbuildings, there are garages, um, multiple vehicles, and then as you start moving away, there are homes that have been impacted, um, maybe not destroyed, but damaged. Uh, you know, if people said that they could see flames, I believe I've heard from, from Lexington, 
Uh, so we're looking at probably, you know, 30, 40 miles away. Can you tell us the name of the woman who died? Uh, I don't have her name at this time. Uh, we'll be releasing that if it hasn't been done already by the coroner's office. Um, if that has not been done, we'll, we will get that out uh, very soon. And you may have covered this before. The number of acres that the burn area, what, how many acres? You know, I, I don't know necessarily an, an acreage area. Uh, we're probably looking at uh, anything within about 500 yards uh, of the of the initial uh, fire or explosion uh, has some kind of damage uh, to it. Any reason why NTSB called You know, th these kind of investigations occur. Uh, the, the federal agencies, uh, they, they, they watch over these kind of things. And so that's going to be up to them. Uh, multiple federal agencies were here. I, I know that the, the FBI, the ATF, and several others uh, he, have been here at the scene already, uh, helping out, offering their assistance, um, and I think it's going to fall onto, onto those federal agencies to continue this invas investigation moving forward. Would you say, sir, why the ATF and FBI don't, a lot of them, was there some thought that there was something other than a pipeline? Explosion? No, not necessarily. I, I, anytime that you have anything like this, uh, it's, it's a whole lot better to, to call in people that, that could potentially help. Uh, they're going to show up, offer their services, see what they could, uh, you know, it wasn't because help some with. Concerned about anything other than a pipeline. No, I, I don't think that you know I, the ATF. They show because you know they deal with explosives. Um, and so I spoke with one of the ATF agents earlier, and he said, "I, I do bombs. This isn't necessarily, but I wanted to come and see what you could help. The FBI help. They help with victims. Um, and so there's a lot of resources that are out there uh, that we're going to try to utilize moving forward. As you well, can imagine." Correct. Anything else? Well, as information becomes uh, more available, I will be sure to let you know. Thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for being a part of this. Before you leave, can the people who spoke say and spell their names so we get it right? Yeah, uh, so I'm Trooper Robert Purdy, R O B E R T P U R D Y. Uh, Jim McGuffey. Jim McGuffey, M C G U F F E Y. Do we know what time we might get another update? You know, I, I don't want to set anything in stone as far as when. Uh, I think that the rest of the, the day, uh, as information becomes available. Uh, All right, you just heard from emergency officials on the very latest out there in Lincoln County. Trooper Purdy with Kentucky State Police saying everyone has now been accounted for, which is some great news to hear. Now, he did mention one fatality. The Lincoln County Coroner's Office has identified the person killed in that explosion as 58-year-old Lisa Denise Derringer of Stanford. We'll keep you updated with the very latest on air and also online at WTVQ.com.